Okay, so uh, I just want to go over a few of the rules for this webinar first. Um, I kind of try to implement some rules that way we can kind of get through this as quickly and efficiently as possible. Um, one of the main rules is to kind of keep questions until until I ask for questions. I just don't want to keep pausing uh, as I'm going through the webinar to answer questions. So just you know, write down your questions and um, you can ask them at the end. Uh, there's going to be about 10 to 20 minutes left at the end to answer questions, which means there's pretty much no way I'm going to get through everybody's questions. So I'll try my best to answer the questions, but if I miss your questions, sorry. Uh, it's just, you know, I I can only answer so many questions before the, uh, the hour is up. Um, okay, so other than that, guys, uh, let's get started with the free day challenge. Um, okay, so... In today's webinar, I'm just going to go over some very, very basic stuff. If you've been around Forex for Noobs for a while, um, you know, if you've ever read uh, my strategy, you're probably already going to know this stuff. But it's kind of important that I go over this stuff today because this is just kind of like the foundation for everything else that's going to come later over the next two days. So I'm just going to go over some basic candlestick stuff. The very start of this webinar, the first 10 minutes, is going to be extremely basic to the point of being boring, probably. But I just want to be sure that I cover that stuff for the people who are new and who don't really understand that stuff yet. So uh, I'm sorry to you guys who've been around for a while. You're going to know some of this stuff, but I'm going to have to go through it anyway. Um, but after that, uh, it should get a little more interesting. So what I'm going to do today is I'm just going to do a few slides here real quick and just explain some basic concepts of candlesticks and then I'm going to switch over to my charts and I'm going to show you some recent trades that I've taken and the members of the advanced course have taken. Um, we're going to take a look at those trades and I'm going to show you how the stuff I showed you at the start, these are uh, basic concepts, have been applied to those charts. And then over the course of the next uh, two days, the two days after this, um, we're going to keep looking back at those trades and I'm going to teach you more and more kind of like pieces of the puzzle. And then by the end of that of this uh, free day challenge, hopefully you're going to have a full of an, full understanding of how uh, we've taken those trades. Uh, me and the members of the Advanced Course have taken those trades. Um, now these are all recent trades, uh, and they're all real trades that I'm going to be showing you today. Um, one is in fact uh, currently open now. It's a daily chart US USDCHF trade. I'm not in that one personally, but uh, a few people in the Advanced Course are in that one. Uh, but anyway, let's get started. I'm going to start with the slides. Uh, this is going to be some very basic stuff for the first 10 minutes, and then we'll get to the more interesting stuff. So just to confirm, uh, everyone can see my screen correct. It says Forex for Noobs, Candlestick Analysis Basics, and you should be able to see me highlighting and drawing on my screen right now. Just want to be sure you guys can see all this stuff. Yep. All right. Awesome. <laughs> cool, cool. So let's get started, guys. Um, okay, so uh, in 2012, I'd done a pretty big survey uh, of Forex traders. There was about 400, 500, I can't remember the exact numbers. Let's just say 400 uh, traders surveyed. And um, I asked a lot of questions in this survey. And, you know, one of the questions I asked was about indicators, because personally, I trade with no indicators. I trade pure price action, which is what I'm going to be teaching you over the next few days. Um, now, I got some very interesting statistics from this survey. One of the statistics, one of the questions was, how many indicators do you use? Um, and 17% of traders said that they use no indicators, which was actually quite surprising. Um, I, I didn't realize there was such a big uh, population of the trading community, Forex trading community, that didn't use indicators. So, you know, that, that was quite surprising. Um, but then, you know, the bad side of that was 23% of traders who in the survey said that they use five or more indicators. And... It's just crazy to use that many indicators. I don't even know how these people see their charts um, with five or more indicators on. Um, so the style of trading I do is completely indicator free. I look purely at price. That That is my only guide. I look at price and I use price to determine when I should be in the market. Uh, because at the end of the day, all indicators are, are, um, uh, uh, are price indicators. They take price. And they run it through some mathematical formulas and then they just spit out some lines on your chart. So all um, all indicators are uh, a price. And I'd rather cut out 
the the indicators and just go straight to the price just look straight to the raw data and just use that to trade um next slide so price action is pretty much the key to trading and candle charts are the key to reading price action i mean candle charts they tell you everything you would ever need to know um to get into a trade candle charts uh, they give you all the information you're ever going to need. And, you know, if you want to, you could use some indicators if you really feel more comfortable with indicators. But the basis of your trading, the core fundamental aspect of your trading should always come back to reading candles because candles are price. And when you're in a trade, you need to know what price is doing to to be able to trade and uh, to be able to be on the right side of the price. Um, so candle charts are key. And we're going to be looking at some very basic candlestick concepts right now. So the the first thing we're going to look at is this. Now, what is this? This is just a line, but it's not just a line. This is a baby candle. It's a candle that opened a quarter of a second ago. This candle is just open. It hasn't moved up or down a single pip yet. Now, over the course of this candle's life, it's going to grow up and Let's imagine we're trading four hour charts or eight hour charts. So over the next four hours, this candle is gonna grow up. And if buyers are in control of the market, this candle is gonna become a bullish candle. So the, the, the point I'm trying to make here is that candles aren't really just basic information. Candles give you a lot of information. This candle here, this candle here is telling us that, that buyers are in complete control of the market because it has no lower wick. It has a big, strong, white bullish body. So this candle here is telling us buyers are in complete control of the market. And this is very important information, especially when you start seeing a string of these candles. It tells you buyers have been controlling the market for a while. And if we get a red candle like this one, that tells us sellers are in complete control of the market. And again, this is very important information. We know that sellers are in complete control of the market. And you know that tells us we shouldn't be buying right now because sellers are in control. So what I want you to start thinking about, I want you to start thinking about uh, candles as more than just uh, more than just graphs. You need to start looking at candles and understanding the struggle between buyers and sellers. Whenever you're looking at a candle, it's giving you some very important information. This candle is telling us sellers are in complete control. But a single candle alone doesn't really mean much. Candles need to be viewed um, as part of larger patterns and trends and stuff like that. And that's what we're going to look at now. So what we see here is a chart and uh, you see some areas highlighted. The red highlighted areas are bearish trends. The green highlighted areas are bullish trends. Now, this, th these candles here, they're giving us a lot of very important information about, about what's going on with the market right now. So when you get all these red candles here, they're telling us sellers are in complete control of the market. When you're getting these uh, white candles here, they're telling us that buyers are in complete control of the market and especially when they're this big you know that tells us buyers are in complete complete control of the market then it switches back to sellers and then it goes back to buyers and then sellers and then buyers and you know the market is in this constant struggle buyers are always fighting sellers sellers are always fighting buyers and they're always fighting for control of the market and when you look at candles when you're reading the candles they allow us to kind of start to understand who is in control of the market. They give us this valuable piece of information, who is in control of the market. And once we know who is in control of the market, then we can start jumping into trades and trading with whoever is controlling the market. If buyers are controlling, we're going to jump into buy trades and we're going to ride, a, ride the trend along with the buyers. If sellers are in control, we're going to be taking shorts and we're going to ride along with the sellers. So when you look at a chart and when you look at these candles, they're more, it's more than just a graph. It's more than just highs and lows. These candles are giving you a lot of very important information. And the, the main things these candles are telling us are the four 
four states of the market. There are four states to the market. The first state is ranging, and you know, ranging is kind of important, but it, it's not very important for the style of trading I do. The most important uh, three states of the market for the style of trading I do are bullish trends, bearish trends, and transitions. Now, transitions are extremely important because transitions, they're that kind of period in between a bullish trend and a bearish trend where we can start to enter the market. So let's check out this same chart again. Um, this is the same chart, but now I've highlighted the transitions too. The transitions are highlighted in blue. So let's take a close look at what's going on here. I'm going to bring up some drawing tools. Okay, so this first red area here, we have a bunch of red candles. Now these red candles are telling us sellers are in complete control of the market. They're all red candles. Uh, they're not very strong, but they are all red candles and they're telling us that sellers are in complete control of the market. But then when, when the sellers get down to here, what happens? All of a sudden we get a white candle. And that kind of has caused a disruption in the, in the previous trend. Then we get this other candle. It's failed to make a new low. And again, it, it just doesn't go in line with the with the previous trend, the trend that's telling us uh, that sellers are in control of the market. So this is kind of a transitionary period. And after the transition comes the bullish trend. And what I aim to do is trade, get into a trade, a reversal trade, during this transitional period or right after the transitional period. And I like to get in right at the start of the new trend and ride the trend for a while and jump out. So let's look at this next one here. So again, we have a bearish proceeding trend. Now this bearish proceeding trend is quite strong, nice strong red candles. So these candles are telling us sellers are in complete control of the market. And then we get these candles here. Now this is kind of a complete turnaround from the previous candles. It's got a bullish body, and you know it, that's telling us that now buyers are fighting for control of the market. Buyers want to control this market, and eventually buyers gain control of the market and they reverse price. Then we come up to here, and we had uh, three very strong bullish candles. All of a sudden, we get a bearish candle, um, long upper wick. Now again, this is a transitionary, transi sorry, transitionary period. This transitionary transitionary period is telling us that we're going from a market controlled by buyers to an undecided market. We're not quite sure who's in control. It's buyers and sellers that are struggling. They're having quite quite an intense battle right now, and they're both struggling for control of the market. And eventually, the sellers win out, and they take control and they push price down, only for the whole process to repeat itself. We get another transitionary period. Price kind of gets stuck here. We go from a completely bearish controlled market, strong bearish candles. We go to uh, a candle with a bullish body and a nice long lower wick. Then another bearish candle, but it's not made a new low. Uh, then a candle with another bullish body. So again, these candles are telling us that we've went from a market that's controlled by sellers to a, a market that's undecided. Um, buyers and sellers are fighting it out. And buyers eventually take control of the market. They push price up, and then it happens again. We get another transitionary period, and um, and then price moves down. Now, you know, th this chart here is a is a very nice example of bullish trends, transitionary periods, bearish trends. Uh, usually, there's some ranges in between the, these kind of periods, but for the most part, this is how the market moves. It moves in a series of bullish trends. Uh, transitionary periods, bearish trends, and then you're going to get a range thrown in every now and then. So bullish trend, bearish trend, etc. And I'm going to remove these drawings. This is this is essentially how I trade. I look for those transitionary periods and I try to get in right after them. I try to get into the new trend. So now I just want to take a quick look at. Um, the transitionary candle, the the indecision candle, the candle that indicates that the market's undecided and that they're, they're in a tight struggle. So, uh, guys, I'm not sure if you were in here at the start, but can we please keep questions until the end of the webinar? 
Uh, I'm going to let you know when questions, uh, when you can ask questions. I just don't want uh, questions interrupting uh, the progress of the webinar. So, um, we're going to take a quick look at indecision and then we're going to switch over to some real charts and I'm going to show you some real trades. So, how all this stuff, this basic stuff, can be applied to real charts to take real trades. Um, and I'm going to be showing you some really recent trades that have been taken uh, this week and last. Uh, so this first highlighted area, that's a bullish preceding trend. Now this bullish preceding trend, um, it's giving us very important information. The information is given us is that bulls are in complete control of the market, buyers are in complete control of the market. So we have a nice strong bullish candle, another nice strong bullish candle, another nice strong bullish candle, and another one. So these candles, they're telling us buyers are in control of the market. And just take a look at them. Take a look at what these candles are actually saying. They all have big, strong bullish bodies. Um, they all have very small lower wicks. So most of the progress this candle made was, was up. It spent most of its time moving up. So this is just telling us buyers are in control of the market. And then when it gets here to this candle, the progress gets a little slower. It's a, it's a smaller candle than the previous few. And then we get this candle. Now this candle is the important one. This is the indecision candle. Now when you get an indecision candle like this, you know, it's usually a really, really good sign that we're going to get a reversal. Now, I'm going to explain why it's a good sign. And, you know, th th this is where it starts to get more interesting. So you guys uh, should, um, should listen to this quite closely. So the first thing that tells me that a reversal is possibly coming is the long upper wick. Now, this long upper wick here, let me just highlight the wick itself. This long upper wick, um, it gives us a lot of very important information because what it's telling us is that buyers, they tried to push price up. So they tried to come up to here, but they just couldn't sustain those highs. Sellers came in and they took control of the market and they pushed it back down. And not only did they push it back down, they then pushed it down further than it's open. So that they, made it, uh, they made it move lower and then they even closed with a bearish body. Now, this candle is telling us that sellers are fighting for control of the market and it's a complete contrast to the previous candles. The previous candles here, they're all telling us buyers are in complete control. And then to have this candle form in the middle of a bullish trend and in the middle of a buy trend, you know, that tells us straight away, hey, sellers are fighting for control of the market and we might have an opportunity to jump into a trade here. Now, I wouldn't jump into a trade as soon as this candle closes um, because, you know, these candles can, these candles, they can form in trends and then the trend can continue. All this candle is really telling us is that there's indecision. And that's why I call them indecision candles. These candles tell us that the market is currently undecided. There's currently a tight struggle. And, you know, that's when, you know, when I look at my chart, I usually trade eight hour charts or daily charts these days. So I check in to my charts, maybe three, four, five times a day, something like that. When I see a candle like this forming in the middle of a trend, you know, that immediately says to me, hey, we could have a trade coming up soon. And you know, then I start planning to possibly take a trade there because this candle, it's a disruption in the bullish trend. And this candle is telling us that that buyer, that sellers might be coming into this market. And then the, the third part is the bearish reversal trend. Uh, so that's when the sellers take control of the market, they take control and they start pushing down. And, you know, I would enter somewhere about here, roughly, um, and I would just ride that trend down. So, you know, this is like, this stuff is very basic, but it, it is pretty much at the, it's pretty much the core of price action. It's it's where it all kind of begins, which is why I'm doing it today in this first webinar. Um, we're gonna we're gonna be looking at other stuff in the next few webinars and kind of expand on this. But this is where it all begins. It's just about reading candles. When you look at a chart, you just have to read the candles. So uh, th this also works on the opposite opposite side too. I mean, if you have a bearish preceding trend. So sellers are in control of the market. Then you get a candle like this, long lower wick, nice bullish body. That tells us that sellers were in control of the market, nice strong bearish candles. 
then you get this nice long lower wick and then you get a bullish body on that on that uh, candle so that immediately tells us that buyers are fighting for control of the market and you know this is where i would start to prepare to possibly enter a trade possibly enter a long reversal trade so th 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 this core concept here is pretty much what i look for day in and day out on my charts there's more to it than that you can't like don't just jump over to your charts tomorrow or this evening and start looking for these patterns and just jump into trades. There's more to it than that, but this is just the basic core of how I trade. Uh, so now I'm going to switch over to some live charts and I'm going to show you some trades. I'm going to show you some trades that are, well, one trade that's currently open and then a few of last week's trades. Uh, and I'm going to show you how I use candles, bearish trends, transitionary periods, and reversal trends uh, to make pips. But before we do that, um, I'm going to give you guys a quick opportunity to ask some questions. And we're going to keep it brief. I'm going to give five minutes for questions, but they have to be on the subject of candles, okay? So if you guys have any questions, ask them now, and uh, I'll answer them real quick, and then we'll move on to some live charts. Okay, okay, okay. So we got a few questions here. I'm just going to quickly read the questions. Uh, uh, okay, one question is, what if price continues to move down, a false breakout? Uh, I'm not going to answer that now because that's going to be covered in coming webinars. Um, like I said, you shouldn't be trading this stuff now based just on the candles. Um, we're going to be looking at entries uh, on the last day of the free day challenge. Um, because entries are definitely the most important part and avoiding false breakouts is, is extremely important. Uh, David, how many indecision, indecision candles can you have in a row? Uh, I tend to, I tend to um, only trade up to three in a row. So if I get three indecision candles in a row, I'll take the trade. But usually what happens is if you get three indecision candles in a row, you just jump up a time frame and you trade the trade on the higher time frame. So if you're looking at a four hour chart and you've got like two indecision candles, jump up to the eight hour and it'll just be one indecision candle there. Um, I tend to do that. Uh, Peter, that's a really important question. Different brokers are set to different GMT offsets. So your candles are gonna look slightly different. Um, now, I get asked this a lot. Candles are going to look slightly different dependent on the broker's, uh, broker's time. But what's important to understand about price is that no matter when the candle opens, price is always telling you the same thing. Price is always saying the same thing. Now, there are going to be times when the candle just doesn't look strong enough to trade. Uh, but for the most part, price is always telling you the same thing. So you don't have to worry too much about uh, what your broker's set up. Okay, guys, there's not many questions related exactly to, to the candles. Um, so I feel I've explained them well enough. Uh, now we're going to switch over to some live charts and... Uh, I'm going to show you some pretty cool trades that have been taken recently, and um, uh, I'll show you how I use how I use everything I've uh, I've gone over, um, how I use candles to actually trade on a real chart and make some real profit. Uh, we're going to start with actually the USDCHF daily chart, and we're starting with this chart because uh, there's a trade that's currently open on this chart. Now I did not personally take this trade. Uh, some members of the advanced course did. I didn't take it myself, but it is um, it is a really nice trade, and it is obviously based uh, on my strategy. So let's take a look at it. 
so here we have a bearish preceding trend. Now, you know, th this is a bearish trend. It ha we see a bunch of candles with nice, strong bearish bodies. Um, and it's quite clear that sellers are in control of the market here. It's a, it's a seller controlled market for these first one, two, three, four, four candles. And then what happens? We get this candle here. Now, this candle, it's not quite as strong as the other ones, but it's really not telling us that there's a tight struggle. It's kind of telling us that buyers are attempting to take control of the market uh, because we had that long lower wick, but it's not really telling us that buyers have taken control of the market. Then we get this candle here. Now this next candle, that candle's quite important because that candle's telling us that buyers are making are making a move to control the market. So this is quite an important candle. It's it, it stands out in stark contrast from the previous candles. The previous one, two, three, four, five candles, those previous five candles, they're telling us sellers are in control of the market. You've got nice, strong, bearish bodies, sellers are in control of the market. But then this candle here, that's telling us buyers are coming into the market, buyers are trying to take control. So, um, you know, with, with this trade, uh, when this candle was seen, uh, people started planning to, to take a reversal here. And they ended up entering the reversal around about here, I think. And as you can see, it's it's worked out quite well. Uh, it's it's hit its target. Its target was here up at the next resistance area. These lines on my chart are support resistance areas. We're going to be looking at them tomorrow. I'm going to be showing you how to place these areas here. So I'm not going to be looking at support resistance today, but I'll be looking at that tomorrow, showing you how to place it. But what I just want you to understand today, because today is the first day and we're just going over the basics, what I want you to understand today is the concept that we have bearish trends, then we have indecision, and we have reversal trends, because that's what we're looking for. We're looking for these transitions of power. That's what I call them. You know, we, we go from a market controlled by sellers to a market controlled by buyers. And in between that period, there's this transition of power. And in that transitionary period, that's where I prepare to enter the trade. And as soon as price comes out of that transitionary period, and uh, in this case, as soon as the buyers take control, that's where I enter the trade. And I, I enter the reversal. Now, this is a really good way to trade. Because we're kind of getting in at the start of a reversal. So we're getting in at right at the start of a new trend. So this is the new trend here. This is the bullish trend. We're getting in right at the start of the bullish trend. And the thing about trends is the longer they last, the more likely they are to die out. So the longer this trend lasts, the more likely it is to reverse. So if I went to enter with the bulls up here at this point, you know, this trend has already moved a significant amount of pips. So I've lost out on a lot of pips and there's greater chance that this trend's gonna die up here. But I'm entering right at the start of the reverse. So I'm entering right down here. And that's, you know, that's what I'm aiming to do. I'm aiming to spot that exact moment where price transitions from a bullish, from a, from a seller control market to a buyer controlled market. Now we're going to look at GUP USD. Yeah, this trade was taken by me last week. I took this trade last week. Um, and this was quite a good trade. It did reverse eventually from news, but it hit its target and more uh, before before the reversal came in. So let's check this one out. Okay, here we go. So this was a, uh, this is a GUP USD daily chart trade. And what we had here was two strong bullish candles, really strong bullish candles. Now these two candles here, they told us right away, buyers are in control of the market. I mean, it's, it's kind of clear what they're telling you. Buyers are definitely in control of the market. It's got huge bullish bodies, relatively small lower wicks. It, it tells you that sellers, eh, you know, they're, they're not really, they're, they're not really um, having a say in where the market's going. It's all about the buyers for those first two candles. And then this candle here, now this is an indecision candle. Um, this candle formed in the middle of the bullish trend and it's got a, a bearish body. Um, it's got a nice long upper wick. So that upper wick tells us that the buyers tried to continue to push up. They tried to take price up, but sellers, uh, they, they reversed uh, that move. They closed with a bearish body um, and they also moved low a little bit. So, you know, that tells us not that sellers have taken control of the market, but that sellers are fighting for control of the market. 
And eventually, we got this uh, nice long lower wick here, the reversal trend. Now, I entered a uh, short around about here on this trade. Or well, actually, I entered short a little bit higher. I entered short around about here. Um, and, you know, this ended up being quite a good trade. My target uh, was here, the next support area. And as you can see, the target was hit, uh, and then it moved down a bit further. I'm pretty sure this reversed because of news. Um, but as you can clearly see, uh, I was able to, to hit my target uh, quite convincingly with this trade. And uh, eventually it reversed, but I was out of the trade before it reversed, so that didn't really matter. And I think the reversal was news-based, uh, but I'm not 100% sure on that. So this was uh, quite a nice trade last week. It ended up making me, I think, about um, nine, 85 pips, 90 pips, something like that. Um, and again, this is just looking at a bullish preceding trend, then looking at the indecision. So we go from buyers controlling the market to indecision to sellers taking control of the market. Now let's take a look at, uh, I believe, USD CAD trade. Here we go. Yeah, we'll highlight from there. Okay, so this ended up being quite a good trade, actually. Um, we had a bullish preceding trend here, so buyers were in control of the market. You could see two uh, bullish candles. There was one, only one really strong bullish candle. It was this one here, but it definitely told us buyers were in control of the market. And then all of a sudden, in the middle of, uh, of this bullish trend, we got this candle here. Now, this candle told us clearly that sellers were fighting for control of the market. And it also told us that sellers were, were winning that fight. I mean, it was a nice, strong bearish candle. It had a pretty strong bearish body. So um, it clearly told us sellers were in control of the market, or were fighting for control of the market, but were, were winning that fight. That's what it was telling us. I mean, we had that upper wick, but uh, buyers didn't even make it up that far before sellers took control, had a nice, strong bearish body. So with the, the price action was clearly telling us sellers are trying to take control of the market. And eventually we got this uh, nice, strong reversal here. Um, this trade was entered about here, I believe, and it was closed out around about here. I think some people stayed in and tried to take some more pips down here, which they succeeded in doing, but uh, the bulk of people closed out here at the first uh, support area. Um, so, so again, this is just a kind of very simple concept. What we're looking at is we're looking at buyers taking control of the market at first, these first two, uh, two candles here. Then we're looking at indecision forming, indecision telling us that sellers are trying to take control of the market. Then we're getting in at the start of that new trend. We're getting in at the start of that reversal trend. And, you know, I'm going to be discussing entries uh, and all that kind of stuff um, in the next few webinars. So don't worry about the entries and stuff. And don't worry about the support resistance areas, these uh, dotted lines. I'm going to be discussing that tomorrow. And entries I'm going to be discussing uh, on Thursday. But I just want you to understand for today just the basic concept of candles. Candles are giving us very, very important information. They're telling us buyers are in control of the market. Then they're telling us when the buyers are losing control of the market and the sellers are gaining control, and then we can enter a short trade. Or, you know, in the in the, in the case of a uh, bullish reversal, uh, candles are telling us sellers are in control of the market. Then they're telling us when sellers are starting to lose control of the market and we can enter a bullish reversal trade. So candles, they give us a lot of information and I use the information they give me in this way. Now I'm gonna show you another trade. Now this one was a really good trade and this one really interest, uh, illustrates the power of, uh, of reading candles. Uh, guys, can we please hold questions until the end? Um, I'm only going to show you two more two more trade examples, I think, and then uh, I'm going to open up for questions. Um, so yeah, let's let's keep questions until the end, guys, please. Uh, okay, so uh, this EuroCAD trade, this is a EuroCAD eight-hour chart. Um, 
this was quite quite a, a good trade last week. Um, we had a bullish proceeding trend. It was a nice, strong bullish proceeding trend. Um, part of the way through the trend, I believe this was caused by news too. We got a nice uh, a nice move by sellers, but it was quickly um, uh, buyers quickly regained control of the market and they pushed up into this resistance area. So this was a bullish proceeding trend, bullish controlled trend, and then what do we get? We get two indecision candles. Both these candles, they indicate that sellers are fighting for control of the market. So we can see that buyers tried to push up on both occasions, but sellers turned that that, uh, that push around and they ended up closing with uh, bearish bodies, which is always a good sign. And also they uh, created some new lows. So um, this candle here created a new low over that candle. So when price creates new lows, that tells us that uh, sellers are doing their job because it's in the sellers, uh, you know, what a seller wants to do is create lower lows. And once the seller has created lower lows, that's a pretty good sign that we're getting a reversal in that trend. Um, and then we, we ended up getting the reversal. Uh, so we had bullish proceeding trend, indecision, and then this nice strong reversal. And it was an awesome reversal, that one. Um, ended up uh, ended up being quite quite a good reversal uh, and I believe this trade was held uh, for the second drop to down to here uh, by some people uh, yeah there's gonna be a recording of the webinar um, okay I think we'll do yeah maybe one more example um, yeah we'll, we'll just take a Quick look at this USD JPY chart. I don't have how many lines on this chart because I don't really trade USD JPY that often. Um, but we'll just do one more really quick example uh, because this one was a little different. So I just want to show you that they're not always perfect. You know, sometimes uh, sometimes they're going to be a little harder to trade, like this one was. So with this one, we had a nice strong bullish proceeding trend. We had indecision forming uh, near resistance. Now this indecision again told us that. Uh, we were going from a buyer control market into a market where buyers and sellers are fighting it out for control. Then the next candle, we had a nice long upper wick. So that that suggested that buyers were taking control of the market. But by the end of the candle, it had dropped down and um, sellers took control of the market. Um, so it, it's not always as easy to read. I mean, the first examples I showed you, uh, some, some of the recent trades, they were quite easy to read. This trade wasn't as easy to read. And it wasn't as easy to read because um, Buyers did make a push for control of the market after the indecision formed, but eventually the sellers won out, and it was the start of a very nice, uh, very nice bearish trend, a very long bearish trend. Um, but it, it, the, the trade wasn't held that whole way. I think it was held till till here, um, and it was closed out on on the first uh, eight-hour candle. Um, but. Uh, that's all I'm going to show you in terms of examples for today, because, like I said, today we're going to go we're going over just the basics. I just want you to understand uh, the core concept of how I trade. I look for these transitionary periods, and then I enter trades at those transitionary periods. And um, in tomorrow's lesson, we're going to be looking at the support resistance areas that these transition transitionary periods form on, because they're a very very important part of the part of the puzzle. Uh, the support resistance areas that they form on are very important. And we're going to be looking at placing support resistance areas tomorrow. Um, so before anyone asks, how do you place support resistance areas? Just know that we're going to discuss that tomorrow. So please, there's no need to ask that. Um, and wait, why is that moved over there? Okay, great. And um, now we're going to open up for questions. And I'm only going to answer questions relating specifically to what we've talked about here today. I'm not sure if there's going to be many questions about this because it is a very basic concept. And um, like I said, we're, we're going over the basics today, but uh, the, the coming webinars are going to be a little more interesting. Uh, and by the third webinar, you're going to have a pretty good idea of how to trade these reversals. Not only how to spot them, because that's what you've seen today, kind of how to spot when a reversal is starting, but I'm going to actually show you how to trade them. So um, let's open up for questions. If you have any questions relating specifically to what we've talked about today, uh, I'll, I'll answer them in case I haven't gone over anything in enough detail.
Okay, okay, there's so many questions. Um, I'm going to try to answer as many as I can. Uh, but just give me a moment to read them. Um, Joe from Portugal is asking, uh, the size of transition candles doesn't matter comparing to the previous trend, candle size. Um, uh, no, the, the size of the indecision, the size of the transition candle doesn't really matter. Um, I mean, preferably I like to have a, uh, a wick that's not too long on the, on the indecision candle, just because I like to place my stop loss below the wicks. Um, but even if the wick is really long, like let's say the wick was down to here, um, it wouldn't really matter. Uh, indecision's indecision at the end of the day, as long as I'm being told by the candles that there is now a struggle between buyers and sellers for control of the market, so that we've gone from a seller controlled market to a struggle, um, to an undecided market, as long as I'm being told that by the candles, I don't really care what size they are. It's just that information, that piece of information is important. The information that, um, we're now looking at a at a struggle between buyers and sellers uh, because that's when you can start entering reversals. Uh, Kevin, yeah, th th that's that's very, very important. Kevin's asked, uh, so reversal candles aren't just pin bar candles, but a concept, I guess, based at SR levels. And, you know, th that's extremely important to understand. And it really, really annoys me when people try to teach reversal trading uh, on other websites and they just call them uh, pin bars and just say, oh, this is a reversal candle, but they don't explain exactly what's happening there. You have to understand what is happening with this candle. This candle is not just a reversal candle. In fact, it is not a reversal candle. This candle here is not telling us reversal is coming. This candle is telling us that there's a struggle between buyers and sellers. It's saying there's indecision currently, but price can very well continue to move down after an indecision candle. I mean, check out this candle here. This candle indicates indecision, but price continue to move down. And these candles form all the time in trends. Indecision candles form all the time in trends, and price just continues to move on after them. There's no such thing, really, as a reversal candle. Candles only tell us that indecision is there, um, but price can continue to move on straight down. So uh, if we got that indecision, let me highlight that here. If we got that indecision here, these indecision candles, um, price can continue to move down from here. There's nothing to say it's going to reverse. You know, there's a few ways to figure out whether it's going to reverse, which is what we're going to be looking at in, in the next few webinars. But it's very important to understand that these aren't reversal candles. These just tell us that there's indecision in the market. So you should stop thinking of candles as reversal candles, pin bars, and all that stuff. Um, it's not that simple. Candles are a concept. And essentially, these candles are just a story of... Uh, buyers and sellers. We're seeing the story of buyers and sellers unfolding as these candles form. We're seeing buyers interacting with sellers. If the candles are all bearish, big strong bearish bodies, tells us sellers are in control. That's what the story is is telling us. Then when we start to see indecision, you know, that's telling us that uh, sellers are no longer in control. Buyers are fighting for control. And then when we see that reversal, it tells us that buyers have in fact won that struggle and that they've taken con that they've taken control of the market. So, so yeah, Kevin, um, that's a very good point, and I'm glad you said that because um, can candles are a concept. It's not, it's not just, oh, this is a reversal candle, so I'm going to jump into a reversal trade here. It doesn't work that way. Uh, divergence, questions about divergence. I don't use divergence because I don't use indicators, so I don't look at divergence. Um, uh, this is a question about my charts. It's not really related exactly to what we talked about today, but I guess it's a bit of an important question. Uh, I'm charting with our Parry MT5. This is a demo account because I don't really show my live account uh, during webinars, but uh, I do have uh, an account with our Parry MT5. Um, and I also have an account with GFT4X. But um, yeah, I, I use our Parry MT5 for my uh, eight hour charts. Um, I don't only trade eight hour charts, I trade daily charts too. And most of the trades taken on the eight hour chart can also be taken on the four hour chart. 
Uh, I just find that the 8 hour charts are a little smoother, a little easier to read. But now the trades that form on the 8 hour, 95% of them are taken on the 4 hour too. They look pretty much the same because it's just two candles instead of one. So um, if you don't have 8 hour charts, don't be too worried. You can take all these trades on the 4 hour charts. All right, there's a question about um, does this stuff apply to every time frame? Um, yes and no. Uh, it does apply to every time frame, but the higher you move up, you move up in time frames, um, the the more accurate this kind of stuff gets because uh, over the higher time frames, um, you're less likely to get erratic movements. So if you're looking at five minute charts, you're more likely to get kind of these erratic movements. Um, but if you look at the longer time frames, um, everything's a lot more smoothed out. So uh, it, it's a lot. It's a lot easier to um, to uh, see these reversals coming, and uh, I trade mainly these days the eight-hour charts and the daily charts. And what I love about trading these higher time frames is I have, um, you know, I can see trades coming a long time before before they happen. So with this trade, for example, uh, I didn't take this trade personally, but I'm just saying, for example, um, you could see this trade coming a long way off because you have the bearish preceding trend. So you would check in, I don't know, every day here. Um, then you get this candle. So this is the first candle that says, hey, there might be a reversal forming, it might happen. Not too sure, but you know, this is where you would get alert. But then 24 hours later, you get this candle. And that candle's telling us, ooh, yeah, we, we could get a reversal here. So that's like 48 hours right there where you know that a potential reversal is coming. And then with this candle, that's when the reversal actually hits. So you have such a long time to plan out this trade. You have a, a long time. And uh, even on the eight hour charts, um, you have you have quite quite some time to plan out trades. I mean, uh, eight hour charts, you only really have to check them uh, three times a day uh, to see all the candles forming. You know, when you see this first candle, that would be your first indication that we might get a reversal. Um, you check in eight hours later, you get this candle. And then eight hours later, and you get the reversal candle. Um, but you know th that gives us a nice 16 hours to know that uh, that a reversal is coming, and um, you know you could jump into a reversal trade here. Uh, uh, Adrian is asking, do these work? Uh, do reversals work in ranging markets? Uh, reversals are pretty much the most consistent way I've found to trade over the past uh, I don't know eight years or so. Um, a breakout trading has breakout trading was fantastic in 2008, 2009, 2010, when the markets were ranging a whole lot more. I mean, the average daily range for GBP JPY in 2008, 2009, 2010 was 500 pips, and routinely you would see GBP JPY move 1,000 pips in a day. And you know, back then reversal trading was good, but breakout trading was also good because you'd get these nice long trends and uh, you could enter breakout trades. Um, but the only thing that's remained very, very consistent is reversal trading. You know, you could trade reversal trading back when GUPJPY was moving 1,000 pips in a day, and you could trade it now that GUPJPY is moving 150 pips in a day. Reversal trading has been pretty much the most consistent way uh, I've found to trade, uh, and it does work in, in any market conditions. Um, this trades pretty much, no, there is trades every week. Um, just one second, guys. I'm just uh, reading through the questions. There's a uh, question about a setup on GU. Uh, this here. Uh, wait, so who asked that? Jeremy, Jeremy T. Uh, Nick, what are your thoughts on the eight hour setup on GU? Was the indecision handle not big enough? Um, the indecision here is that one there. Uh, that's where the first indecision candle came in. Um, with this trade, um, it wasn't the indecision that wasn't big enough. It was the preceding trend. Preceding trend was too weak, and I wouldn't have taken this trade. But I'm going to explain that uh, in the coming webinars. I'm going to talk a lot about preceding trends, um, especially on these uh, on the eight-hour charts, because uh, there's something very important about eight-hour charts that excludes this trade from being taken. 
Um, I don't take eight hour chart trades that, uh, you know, the bulk of the preceding trend formed um, before the weekend. I don't like taking trades on smaller time frames that are formed over the weekend. Uh, but anyway, we're going to be talking about that in uh, in coming webinars. Um, but no, this this here was not a trade. Damon, I trade. I personally don't trade NFP. Uh, um, what are your thoughts? Uh, Jeremy, what are your thoughts when multiple setups are forming on similar pairs like EUGU at the same time, or Euro Yen, Euro Yen and USD Yen? Should you trade both to limit risk or trade the best setup? Um, it's really up to you at the end of the day how you handle a situation like that. I tend to just uh, pick the best setup, but um, I'm happy with taking one to two trades per week personally. Uh, a lot of people in the advanced course want to take more trades than that, so they would trade both setups. Um, you know, my, my strategy isn't really limiting into the in that sense in the amount of trades you take, because the amount of trades you take is really something personal to you. That's uh, that's money management, risk money management. And uh, that's not dictated by the strategy itself. The strategy itself is just uh, it's just the core concept of price action and using price action to take the trades. Um, but at the end of the day, you have to decide how you want to manage uh, your money. Obviously, taking uh, the same trade uh, uh, on uh, the, the same trade on two different pairs, um, in my opinion, opens you up to more risk. So I, I wouldn't do it because I'm a very conservative trader. Um, thanks for clarifying that. Uh, oh, that's a good question, David. Uh, does data from candles proceed, uh, take precedence over news events? Um, for the most part, uh, I stay out of the market with big news events like the NFP report. Uh, if NFP is coming, I, I probably wouldn't take the trade. Um, so technically speaking, news takes pre precedence over the formation of candles because uh, news uh, can be disruptive, it can disrupt trends. If um, buyers and sellers uh, are, struggling, uh, are struggling and sellers, uh, sorry, buyers take control of the market, um, that news, uh, it, it, can, it can cause a bit of a disruption and it can reverse the trend. So news tends to take precedence. Uh, uh, yeah, Fabrice, uh, Fabrice is asking, so Confluence makes it all, you wouldn't take that USDCHF trade between SR, but at, at support resistance you would take it, and that's correct. Uh, I would only take trades at support resistance because I know at support resistance buyers and sellers, uh, there's buyers or sellers grouped there waiting to enter the market. Um, but again, support resistance is something we're going to discuss tomorrow, so um, so uh, we'll take a look at that tomorrow. And you know, when, when I talk about support resistance tomorrow, a lot of this, a lot of what we talked about today is gonna come together and it's gonna start making a lot more sense. And then on the last day, when I talk about actually entering the trades, that's when it's all gonna kind of come together and you're gonna see how kind of easy trading like this is and how powerful it can be. Uh, but yeah, the support resistance for tomorrow, so. Uh, Kathy, um, we're going to be talking about support resistance tomorrow, so uh, I'll answer that tomorrow. Uh, how long do I hold trades? In general, I hold trades for about, I don't know, two to three candles most times. Sometimes longer, but most of my trades uh, on the eight hour run for about, uh, I don't know, eight to 24 hours, let's say. Uh, on a daily chart, my trades run one to two days, sometimes three or four days, but most of the times they closed up pretty quick. Um, Jeremy, do I look at lower time frames to get a more conservative exit? Uh, no, not really. I found that looking at lower time frames um, can just uh, scare you out of a trade because. Um, you're going to start to see potential signs of reversal on the lower time frames, and you're going to jump out of the trade way too early. Uh, I don't look at lower time frames, but we'll talk about exits and stuff uh, on the last day. 
And yes, this webinar will be recorded. It will be recorded, it will be uploaded, and you guys can watch the recording. Ah, uh, stops, is that what you meant, Jeremy? Um, no, stops are usually determined either by the lower wick in the case of a uh, reverse bullish reversal trade, or the upper wick in the case of a uh, of a uh, bearish reversal trade. So, so in this case, the stop would be term determined by this wick here. I try to place a blow here, but if that's too low, then I would just uh, place the maximum allowable stop as per my risk or money management rules. Um, but if you want to jump down to a lower time frame, you can uh, to determine a good stop. I don't really do it. I don't feel a need to, but if you want to, you can. It's not a bad way to do it, actually, because um, you know if you can't put the stop uh, that you're looking at on the daily chart, you might find a nice, uh, a nice place to enter a stop uh, on the eight-hour chart. Uh, but again, this is stuff we'll talk about on the last day. Anyway, guys, I'm going to call an end to this webinar because we've been, uh, it's been about an hour now. Uh, so I'm going to stop this webinar. Uh, I'm going to be in the room for another 5-10 minutes, uh, I guess, and I'll answer a few more questions here and there. Uh, but